Hello everyone and welcome to From Scratch with a Catch. This is my main account. Obviously, mainly I've been uploading Talman videos, but I'm running out of membership and I need bonds. I've just liquidated my bank and I've got 1.1 bill and I could use them like I have been for the past year or so on my other accounts, but I thought it'd be fun to make a series out of it. So I've kept basically all my untradables and just random stuff that isn't worth anything. A lot of it's useless junk that I could probably chuck, but whatever. I've got rid of it all and I'm going to use one tab to keep track of everything on here. Onto the rules. Now, I'll keep the rules brief. Basically, these are my stats on the main. My hardcore's got better stats because I kind of quit this account and gave up, but I thought, I need some money, let's play the main for a bit. So, using these stats, I'm going to roll a roulette wheel and it's going to have all the skills that can make money, as well as bossing, normal monsters and no experience money making, like collecting swamp toads or something. And then we're going to spin the roulette wheel. There'll be different weights on them. If the boss table or the standard monsters rolled, it'll roll the sub table with them on and pick what we've got to do. For monster killing, once we've done it once, it's done. We've got to remove it from the table, same for bossing. With skilling, the rule is we've got to do a money maker, and then if we've done it, we're not allowed to do it again. So if we get thieving and we thieve Knights of Ardoon, we're not allowed to do that again when it rolls thieving again. To keep this series interesting, what we're going to do is the minimum that we can do a skill or whatever it lands on is 30 minutes and the maximum is an hour. Meaning if I land on something really good, I can only do it for an hour and if I land on something really bad, I'm forced to do it for at least half an hour. That should keep things interesting and make it so I have to come up with quite a bit of strategizing. For example, if the first thing that we roll is Abyssal Demons, I'm going to have to kill them like this with no food, no prayer, punching. And that's going to be fun, but it means that I can't roll Abyssal Demons later on when I could kill them more efficiently. Similarly, if I land on Herblore, where one of the best things to do for making money is to like make unfinished potions, which I know isn't Herblore experience directly, but I'm going to count it as Herblore anyway, I need money. So if I roll it early when I've not got much money, I'm not going to get the biggest impact out of that, and then I'm locked out of making that specific unfinished potion again. So it should keep things very interesting, considering there's a lot of strategy involved. It's worth noting, the stopwatch will only be running when I'm actually doing the activity. So if I'm killing Abyssal Demons, I get a Rune Chain Body Drop. If I want to sell that on the Grand Exchange, I can go and do that and then pause the timer and go back. However, if I'm doing combat and I'm banking to continue killing them, that doesn't stop the timer. It's just if I'm selling something to actually benefit afterwards. So that's basically it for the rule set. So should we get straight into it? Yeah, let's go. Okay, so this is my wheel. As you can see, we've got every skill listed with a weighting of one which means about 50% of the time it's going to hit a skill. And we've got a weighting of 4 on the no EXP money makers, which are things like collecting swamp toads, buying from shops. We've got a boss table and a standard monster table. So if they're rolled, we've got sub tables, which are just here. Okay, first roll. Standard monster table. This is interesting. Okay, well, let's just do it. Okay, so what you see here is the standard monster subtable. We've got 26 things on here. As you can see, they're all just monsters that you can kill. There's some high level, low level. I was going to add Basilisk Knights on here and Vampire Sentinels, for example, but I've done those quests on my hardcore, but not my main, because by the time I stopped playing my main much, uh, those quests went out, and I've not done them since. Um, so that's something. Anyway, everything's evenly weighted, so I guess we just spin. Good luck. Abyssal Demons. Wow. <laughs> so this is one of the best things and one of the worst things to get early. Because obviously we can't kill them efficiently. So we're not going to get many kills in an hour. But it's also one of the things that could potentially get us a bit of money to start off with. Or even a big jump with a whip. So I'm not mad at this. But we'll see how it goes. It is worth noting that I can use untradables to get to places. I can't use teleports without buying them, but I can use minigame teleports and actual untradables to get to places like these and the seed pod to get to Trinome Stronghold. Because that doesn't detract from the series in any way in my opinion, because the time only starts when I start hitting them anyway, so getting there isn't part of the series really, so I'm making these exceptions. I can't use it as a weapon though, obviously. I was considering killing these at Mauritania Slayer Tower just for some nostalgia, but... I've got to get past Abby Spectres and I can't afford a nose peg, so I'm going down the catacombs. Okay, so here we are. Now, just so we go over the rules once again real quick, let's crack on. I've got a stopwatch on the screen now, so three, two, one, go. Okay, and there's the first kill. Rune Medelm! Oh, that is so lucky. Okay, it took three minutes. Uh, I'm just going to increase the timer size a little bit. So that's three minutes. We have 56 minutes left. 
So, a Rune Medal is a really good first drop. That's 11k straight up. I think I might go to the G when I can get a Rune Sim, maybe? I could afford a Rune Sword now, but... I'm gonna, I might go to the G at like 10 minutes in. Kill count number two. And Addy Bar. Let's have a look at what we've got. I think we've got enough for a Rune Sim. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run back to the bank. I misspoke earlier in the rules, by the way, in one part. I said that if I... Um, it, going back to the Grand Exchange counts as time. Well, it does, but uh, it, in a sense, because banking counts as time, as soon as I am at a bank, I'm allowed to pause the timer and then go buy and sell things and then come back. However, I have to come back and start the timer from the bank that I banked at. So, for example, I'm going to go upstairs here and bank. When I hit the bank, I can pause the timer. I can go to the Grand Exchange, but I've got to come back to the bank to start the timer. And that's the fairest that I think I can do it without wasting too much time buying stuff. Timer paused. 8 minutes 7, 2 Abyssal Demon kills and we've got quite a bit of money. Just bank to get a Royal Sea Pod just to tree there, it'll be a bit quicker. Okay, so I've just sold the loot and we've got 17,000, so let's see what we can buy. Rune Scimitar obtained. We've got a little bit more money, but I'm probably just going to keep that as money for now. Back to Demons. And we're off. Okay, third kill took less than 2 minutes, this is a lot quicker. I'm just going to pick up everything for money. Now, I'm going to drop this for now because I've not come to terms with what I should do for clues. Maybe I stack them in the bank and if I roll it, I can do the clues that I've currently obtained. Or I could just do the clues straight up. And would the count as part of the time? I might run a little poll at some point and see what people think on that. But for now, for this episode, I'm not going to do clues. Not a bad drop, insult Abyssal Head. Um, and that's a full ink, so I'm going to have to go bank now. The next steps to get a dragon simi. I don't really care about any armor pieces yet, so I don't think I've quite got enough. I've got just over 50k right now. I'm gonna go bank this, pray at the altar, and then run straight back. So no pausing the timer this time. Also, we're about halfway through. I could stop killing them now and reroll, but considering I can't kill them again, I think it goes without saying that I'm gonna kill these the entire hour. Not bad. Just got a runner. I'm quite lucky that this is like my first combat task because abyssal ashes add up. Like, I'm at 25 kills already in 40 minutes, and that's like 50k. Just banked another ring, and I now have 9 minutes left. Yes, another rune med, that's huge, it's like a 13k kill. Okay, just got my last kill, I'm not going to get another in 30 seconds, so I'm going to stop the timer. So, let's go back to the G. Okay, this is the current tab, 132k, that's not bad at all to be honest for the first one. 132k from nothing in an hour, I'm absolutely fine with that. It's just a shame that I can't get Abbey Demons again. Oh well. So, we're going to roll another task. Let's go. Okay, what are we going to get? Fire making. Well, I guess I know what we're doing with this one. So, obviously we're going to go to Winter Todd for the first fire making one. Just, because it's probably one of the only realistic ways of making money. So, I'm going to use the Pyromancer that I've got on the account because it's untradeable and has no stats. So, that's fine. And I've just bought a Staff of Fire. I do need food, so I'm going to sell all these ashes. 71k, nice. I'm going to just buy some Karamb ones. I'll do 50 because they'll be useful in the future. Luckily, we got a Black Axe earlier as well, so we've not got to buy one. A Black Axe is better than Steel, and Steel's basically the same as Dragon at Winter Todd. I know the tools are there, but it just feels better to buy them. And I'll get a game snack. Awesome. And with that, we are off. Now, I've only got an hour, tops. I'm not going to do a solo. Solos take like 45 minutes or somewhere in the range of. I'm just going to join the, the normal world and just do this standardly and save all the crates till the end. I think that's going to be the best way to do this. Time starts now. I'm going to turn Entity Hider on for this. Kill account number one. I've not done this, like I said, I've not played this account in a while, so I've just got combat achievements for Winter Todd. That's crazy. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Looks like we might get 12 here. Number 10. We should have time for one more. And there we go. Kill account 11. As you can see, I'm at 59 minutes, so I'm going to stop that timer now. I'm not doing any more. Let's go loot. 
Okay, we've got 11 crates. This is anywhere from 22 to 33 rolls. Now, as we're not on iron, like I normally am when I do this, we're just looking for value finishing my pyromancer while I'm at it. Magic logs are nice. And to be fair, the coins are nice as well. A double pyromancer drop. That's weird. Okay, and there we go. And seeing as I've already got a pyromancer garb, I'm going to go trade that in for another crit, which I got from the loot, which means I am allowed to do it. And I got some shark. Okay, we've got 103k from that apparently, which isn't that bad. So overall, we should have nearly 250k now, look. Not bad. Okay, so Winter Todd's gone. All done. So if we're all fire making again, we're going to have to find something else to do. And that is the beauty of this series. It's also going to be the death of me. But let's roll again. Standard monster table. Okay, remember, Abyssal Demons aren't there anymore. I was considering when I made this to have three rolls on everything, so I'd have to roll Abyssal Demons three times for them to be removed, but... I'll keep it like this, it should be more fun. Okay, let's roll it. Spiritual mages. Okay, I'm down. Okay, first things first, sell up. Okay, I've got a few more things in the banks, so that's not bad. Second thing, buy a D-SIM. And here we are, an actual decent weapon. This feels good. Okay, so sort of bought Godwell's dungeon. We got a teleport to house tab, which we've put a scroll of redirection on just to get there. We've got honorable blessing, Zami monk bottoms, monk rub top, and a bando stall. That should cover all the protection. Now, obviously we're going to need a little bit of food as well. And because we're going to need food a lot, I'm just going to buy 100. And just in case, I'm just going to buy a prayer pot. Jeez, they're expensive now on mains, aren't they? Okay, and I think that's it. Off we go. Just made a pit stop to get some gloves. I don't think this is a waste of money, even if I'm going to get barrows soon, just because they're quite handy. Yeah, get it? Handy. I'm sorry. Okay, so here we are. It's worth noting that I've not forgotten about the next, the Lazaros spiritual mages. It's just the drop tables are completely different and they get a lot more on average. So I'm going to have them as a separate roll on the table. And on that note, let's begin. Looks like I should be able to get over 100 kills an hour here. I did bring too much food though. Okay, this is kill count number 40. And I'm going to stop the time when I've picked this up. Okay, so we're 15 minutes in. We've currently got 61k. So this is going to be over 200k up for this task. And also, because we've killed 40 in 15 minutes, we're going to kill approximately 160 in an hour. And D-boost drop rate is only 1 in 128. So maybe we can hit a pair. We are approaching the 30 minute mark. Which means I can quit doing these. But I think it goes without saying that I'm going to carry on. We're apparently at just over 100k already in 76 kills. So, with any luck, even without D boots, we're going to get another 100k, so this is awesome. We are definitely doing this for the full hour. Ooh, first loot beam of the series. D boots. That's like 150k, I'm so happy that I hit them. I don't know if I'm going to keep these or sell them, probably sell them, because there's things that are better. Oh, it feels so good to actually hit something, like, yeah, it's not much, but it's something, and that's what counts. Especially considering it basically just doubled my bank value. I'm kind of hoping that I roll bosses next, but we'll see. 15 minutes to go. Let's see if we can get some more boots. Yes! Two dragon boots this task. This is turning into like a 500k task already. Is like the third one. This is amazing. I've got 12 minutes left. What's the chance I can get a third? What the f- <laughs> Back to back. That's three. What is going on? Like, that's quite literally back to back. That's three and 123 kills. Well, 128 kills because I had a few nothing drops. Jeez. Come on. Back to back to back. What Come on. Never lucky. I don't know what's going on, but I like it. That's the fourth pair in 52 minutes. 53 minutes. That is insane. I've only got, the, I'm only like at the drop rate for one, like 10 kills over. This is actually crazy. But again, no complaints from me. I guess wish D boots were 400k like they used to be back in the day. Okay, this is going to be my last kill, hopefully. Just in time. So this has been a hell of a task. We price check everything. We've got 818k. Considering our bank value was 200k before, we've just quintupled it. That is absolutely crazy. I think I'm going to keep one of these D-boots at this point, just as a token. And, guess they're decent anyway. That's insane. Let's go roll our next and potentially final thing of the episode. I am thinking about adding some things to this, but I'll go through them at the end of the episode and ask you to leave your opinions in the comments. But for now... Woodcutting. I mean, that's nice and chill. Yeah, let's go do some woodcutting. I think it goes without saying that I'm selling a pair of D-boots for a dragon axe. And there we are. Now, 
this is kind of where the series gets a little bit interesting and weird. And I'm not sure if people like it or not or whatever, but rolling woodcutting. Obviously, we know woodcutting is not a great moneymaker. And once I've done magic logs once and new logs once, I can't do them again. So if it rolls woodcutting again, I'm going to be forced to cut something like maple willow. Obviously, I can choose to do it for half an hour. But at the end of the day, woodcutting is not going to be that eventful. So let's go see how many magic logs we can cut. I think I may as well go straight for magic off the bat. Okay, so at 1k a log, I might get 100k, 200k, I don't know how many I'm going to cut in an hour. But, let's just go for it. Well, here we are. We ready? Go. I've not cut magic trees in so long, I don't even know how many to expect. Okay, first inventory complete. Let's get to the bank and pause. So, one ing's worth 29k-ish, and that took 11 minutes and 45 seconds. I mean, it's not that bad. Because, what, times this by 5, 5 and a half, we get like 150k. 150k is better than the first two moneymakers we got, so honestly, not that bad. I'm just kind of worried when woodcutting's hit again. Inventory 2. Okay, this is the last full ing because I'm 55 minutes in. I'm not going to quit here though. I am going to finish the full hour and just see what we get. One, and that's it. No more logs. So I got six more in that like five minutes. Bringing it to a total of... 118. 122k, that's not that bad. And I think this is a good place to call it quits on this episode. So we got 133k from the Abyssal Demons, 103k from Winter Todd, 808k from Spiritual Mages, and 122k from Woodcutting. Giving us a total, according to Runelight, of 1.13 mil, which is not bad starting from scratch for one episode. Now, before we go, I do want some opinions on something, so please comment below to any of these. I am thinking about adding some more rules. Not rules, but more things to the rules to make it more interesting. Firstly, we dropped a lot of clue scrolls this episode, because I weren't sure whether to incorporate them into the time or not. And I'm thinking about adding a clue scroll roll to the table, and whenever it's hit, the next three clue scrolls that I get, I can do with a timer paused. But every time that I hit it, I get three extra tokens. So if I hit it three times over the next 20 spins, I can do nine clues in total. But I don't get to pick and choose the clues, it's just nine that I hit. But I do have to get the caskets for them. So if I do hit like a medium clue from woodcutting, I've got to do it. I can't send no and wait for a hard or an elite. And that also means I'm not going to be doing master clues in this, which could work out good. Also, I want to add a reroll token. So whenever that's landed on, whenever I hit a roll, I am allowed to reroll on one of the tables. And I also want to add one option for an untradeable table. So the untradeable table is just going to simply be a table that when hit allows me to use an untradeable for the rest of the series. So that could be Dragon Defender, it could be a Fighter Torso, a Void, Fire Cape, anything like that. Just untradeables that you can't buy. So Barrows, Gloves and such won't be on there because you can buy those with money. Same for Arva's devices. So I won't be like putting an Assembler on there either because I've got Vorkath and I might get one there. But it's just things that can't really be obtained without spending time on minigames because that's not part of what this series is about. This is just straight up roll something, get some money. So I guess what are your thoughts on that? And I'm probably going to eventually add raids and stuff. But like I said, I don't really want to do it just yet. But maybe when I've hit like 10, 25 mil, one of those. And then I won't feel like I'm leeching as much. On that note, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'll be releasing this more than likely every Sunday. If not, it'll be three Sundays every month. And hope to see you next time. Bye.